ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Hurry, big fellow! I'm Silver! Hi! In Washington, D.C., two operatives of the Secret Service discussed the expected arrival of Jeff Darwin, one of the most trusted agents of the government. Coming all the way from the Pacific Coast. Yeah. I'd like to know why the chief brought him all that distance for a half-hour interview. Darwin isn't in trouble, is he? Trouble? Why, of course not. Jeff Darwin doesn't get into trouble. And there's just one other conclusion. And that? Well, the chief has an assignment of such an extremely secret nature that he can't entrust it to the mails or telegraph, even though the instructions are in code. Well, that's a logical conclusion. I might go a step further. Yeah? I might add that this assignment has something to do with the Pacific area. Darwin being more familiar with that area than the rest of us? Yes. Well, I quite agree. I can think of no man better qualified for work in the West than Jeff Darwin. When you say work in the West, you cover a lot of territory. Well, of course. Well, Darwin is tops for the Pacific coast, but in the section between the Mississippi and the mountains, well, that's different. Well, do you know an operative who is more familiar with that part of the West? Well, not exactly an operative. I'm thinking of someone other than an official member of the Secret Service. Uh, what's that in your hand? Look. A silver bullet. Oh, yes. I treasure this. It was given me by a man who once worked with this department on a special assignment. The Lone Ranger? Mm hmm I wish I'd had the opportunity to meet him. Oh, I wish you had. I saw that masked man in action. What masked man? What? Jeff! Darwin! Say, you're looking fine. Oh, boys, it's good to see you again. <laughs> How's the West? How was the trip from the coast? West is fine. Trip was terrible. Speed the day when the railroads will replace the stage lines. Is the chief inside? Yeah, I think he's waiting for you. I'll tell him you've arrived. Uh, what are you doing with a bullet, Sam? Oh, this? You don't miss much, do you, Jeff? Silver, isn't it? Yes, it is. Does it mean anything to you? Not a thing. Should it? Have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? Oh, the Lone Ranger. Yes, I've heard legends. They're not legends, Jeff. They're true. <laughs> you don't believe the stories you've heard? No. Nope. Therefore, you say the stories of the Lone Ranger's ability are legendary. Well, of course they are. Uh, the chief wants to see you right away, Don. Thanks. 
Don't bet on your conclusions, Jeff. You might lose. <laughs> I wouldn't lose. There was another man who knew of the meeting between Jeff Darwin and the chief of the Secret Service. This man was Aaron York, who lived near the Rio Grande because it was convenient for his gun-running activities. Then, too, it was reassuring to know that the border was handy in case, through some incredible circumstance, his freeboot plans became known to the law. York was an opportunist, ready to turn his energies into anything profitable. Certain connections, well-paid ones in the East, gave him ample material with which to work, information that was known to few. York sat in his office, his bulk filling the massive desk chair. Through heavy-lidded eyes, he studied the man who squirmed uneasily before him. Finally, he spoke. I sent for you, Nizer. I came as fast as I could, Mr. York. You're about to become one of a very exclusive group. What? What do you mean? I'm going to tell you something that's known to less than a dozen people in this country. Yeah? That is, I think I am. I wonder how far I can trust you and Baudry. How far? Why... All the way, Mr. York. Me and Baudry have always followed out your orders. We never balked at anything. Yeah, I know. Sit down, Nizer. Thanks. You know, this country is becoming greater all the time. Me, I me. mean the United States. Oh. And the federal government feels that sooner or later one of the foreign nations will have designs on us. Us? The United States. Because of that... The government has prepared extensive plans for the defense of the coasts. I, I don't see what you're getting at, Mr. Well, Yard. you will in a minute. The plans for the defense of the Pacific coast have been completed, but certain details have to be checked. Yeah? Now, there's a member of the Secret Service named Jeff Darwin on his way to the Pacific coast to check the defense plans. Darwin, huh? Mm-hmm. He carries with him a copy of the plans. Oh, I begin to savvy. And I know the route over which he'll travel. But, uh, Mr. York, where's the payoff? There'll be no payoff for some time. Might be months or years. But someday a foreign nation will be glad to pay a fabulous price for the information Darwin carries. Why, think of what it'd mean to an attacking army to have advanced knowledge of every move our troops would make. Knowledge of every concealed fort and gun. But if we got to wait years, Mr. York... I'll pay you and Baudry in cash for what you do if you prefer it that way. I do. And I think Baudry will say the same. Very well. Now, here's what I want. I want Jeff Darwin captured and brought here. Where can we find him? He left the stage line at Parker's Bend. He's traveling from there on horseback. And he's traveling alone. I know his schedule, and I'll tell you and Baudry exactly where he'll be camped tomorrow night. This ought to be an easy job. Yes, it should be. Tomorrow night, Darwin will be making this camp on the east bank of Moccasin River. Now, you and Baudry will ride up as if you're simply a couple of pilgrims. There he is, Baudry. I can camp on the river bank just like York said he'd be doing. York sure has a way of getting true facts. He pays for them. That friend of his in the east. Nizer, are you sure that's Jeff Darwin? We don't want to get the wrong man. York don't like mistakes. That's Darwin all right enough. I wouldn't take him for a Secret Service man. He looks more like a prospector or something. Yeah, what of it? No one would take us for a couple of fast gunslingers. We look more like pilgrims. Yeah, that's so. He's made himself up to look like a prospector. That's so people won't suspect what he really is. Secret service men ain't like marshals. They don't go around telling everyone what they are. Wouldn't be secret service men if they did. I wonder where he keeps the plans. I don't know. What's the difference? Nizer. He's watching us. Sizing us up. Let him. We'll ride right up and ask the way to Parker's Bend. And we'll get to talking and... Watch our chance to grab him sudden. Get up, boy. Get up, get up. Ooh, 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 boy. Hey. Easy there. Hi there, stranger. Hey. Howdy. We want to talk to you. What is it? You needn't have your hand on that gun, mister. What do you want? There ain't no need to be unsociable, mister. We just want to ask the way to Parker's Bend, that's all. Is that all? Sure. Go due east along my back trail and you can't miss it. What's the matter with you? You get your gun in hand every time you meet a pilgrim? 
Maybe I'm just unfriendly. Say, uh, that's a nice horse you got there. Stay where you are. Huh? Why, what's the trouble? I was just going I don't like strangers in back of me. And I don't like your way of I don't like your excuses for stopping here. You know the way to Parker's Bend. Mount up and get going. Stranger, we don't take that kind of talk. I'll back it up. With that shooting iron? (laughs) Listen, I can draw and fire before you can squeeze that trigger. Don't try it. Why not? Good work, Nizer. Smashed his gun neat. Fix him. I'll show him. Oh, you don't? Don't fight, man. Get behind him. He's a fighting fool. Gun slap him. (laughs) Recovering from his amazement at the unbelievable speed of Nizer's draw, Jeff Dowron became a fighting fury. He ducked and sidestepped. He turned and wheeled. Whipped blow after blow to vital spots. He staggered Boder with a jab to the stomach and momentarily stunned Nizer with a sharp hook to the chin. But every blow that Darwin scored, he took two in return. Get behind him. Uh, Fix it. Get him from behind. Gun club him. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that'll do it. That ought to fix him. Yeah, we fixed him all right. We fixed him permanent. We can't lug a dead man to York's place. We'll take everything he's got and drag the body down the bank of the river. We can hide it in the bushes. No one will find it there. Mr. York, there wasn't anything else we could do. Beaudry, when I give orders, I want them carried out. And I told you I wanted Darwin brought here. Yes, I know. Well, you didn't do it. You think I talk just so as I can exercise my tongue? I didn't want Darwin killed. At least not right now. Mr. York, I'll leave it to Nizer. We couldn't bring him in alive. Beaudry's right, Mr. York. It had taken a dozen men to capture him alive. I never seen such a fist fighter. We brought everything he had, Mr. York. Yeah. There's his saddlebags, his pack, the stuff that was in his pockets. The grub he had. Everything. We even brought his clothes in case he had something hidden in the lining. There's everything, Mr. York. Did you bury him? No, but we hid the body so it won't be found. Ah, you bungled this job. We'd done our best. We hid the back trail and everything. Mr. York, if Darwin had the plans with him, they've got to be there in that stuff. We brought everything he had. We'll see. We even brought some pictures he'd made with a pencil. Here. Sim? Hmm. Seems to have been something of an artist. Here, Mr. York, let me show you something. I found this bundle of writing. These might be the plans you want. Yeah, let me see. Hmm. In code. Sure, but you can decode them. There might be a key to the code among Darwin's effects. Leave these things here. All right. And that's all for now. Go back across the border, and if I want you, I'll send for you. We'll be in the usual place. Come on, Isaac. Well, this is interesting. In my hand. The secret plans for the defense of the West Coast of the United States. (laughs) This will be worth a fortune to a foreign power. In Washington, D.C., the head of the Secret Service was at first annoyed. I told Darwin to send me a report each day. His itinerary was arranged to make it possible. Haven't heard from him since he left Parker's Bend four days ago. The chief was annoyed, then he was concerned. It's been a week. Check my electric telegraph with these men in the West. Bring me the replies just as soon as you can. The chief was annoyed, then concerned, then he became worried. Ten days. There's been no trace of Darwin beyond Parker's Bend, chief. But his trail. No sign of it. His horse. No trace. Get men who know the West. Frontiersmen, scouts, men who can find a trail and follow it. But keep Darwin's business and identity a secret. Two weeks. Not even the scouts can find a trail. Darwin must be dead or captured. And what about the plans? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. Jeff Darwin of the Secret Service had been missing for two weeks. The department head in Washington was worried, not only about Darwin, but about the secret defense plans he had with him. The Secret Service chief thought Darwin must be dead or captured. Jeff Darwin was neither dead nor captured. He was in an Indian village, lying on buffalo skins in the sunshine near a large wigwam. Darwin watched an Indian approach. You got eyes open. That good. By and by you get strong, get well. Are you the leader of these Indians? That right. Me, Chief Thundercloud. Thundercloud, huh? Sit down. Maybe better you not talk yet. You unconscious for a long time. How long? Two weeks. I've been conscious since yesterday. I wanted to think. I didn't want to talk. Kept my eyes closed. Uh, How did I get here? Hunter find you on bank of stream. You hurt bad. My clothes? Where did these clothes come from? You got no clothes when Indian find you. No clothes? How about... How about my horse? The saddlebags? You alone. They're nothing else. Nothing? Not even a... A pack? They're nothing. I see. Thundercloud, how far is Parker's Bend? On other side of mountain. Did your hunters have far to bring me? Half day on horse. I see. Maybe you tell Thundercloud what happened. I had the drop on them. Two of them. Before I could fire, one man drew and fired. Shot my gun away. Maybe you got friends. We send them word. Tell them where you are. No. Oh, I fell down on them. Fail them. I can't go back until I find those two men. I won't go back until I find them. In the days that followed, Jeff Darwin let his beard grow so he wouldn't be recognized. He stayed in the Indian village at night, but each day he rode a barred horse through the surrounding country in search of the men who'd robbed him. Disgraced. Can't go back. Wouldn't help if I reported to the chief. He'll know something happened to me. To the plans. I can't go back. Those two should never have gotten a jump on me. Day after day, Jeff Darwin rode through hills and valleys. He returned to the scene of the fight, but found nothing. He questioned those he met, but learned nothing. Three weeks after the attack... Jeff Darwin met a leathery-skinned frontiersman. No, I ain't seen the man you described, mister. I'm sorry. All right, thanks. Hold on. Maybe you've seen something of the man I'm hunting for. You hunting someone? Yep. He's about 5'10 high and solid built. Smooth shaved and rides a piebald horse. What? Oh, uh, do you know his name? No. I found people in Parker's Bend that had seen him, but none knew his name. He disappeared after leaving there. He hid his tracks right slick. No sign of him. He... He hid his tracks? Ain't seen him, have you? No. Why do you want him? Well, me and some of the other boys are hunting him for some government official. I guess the critter's wanted by the law. Oh, I see. Well, I got to get along now. Bye. Goodbye. (laughs) Wanted by the law. They think I hid my tracks. Think I double-crossed them. Stole the plans. Well, that removes all doubt about what to do. I can't go back. Not unless I redeem myself. Not unless I find those thieves. Until then, Jeff Darwin is dead. In Washington, the lights burned late at night in an official office. The Secret Service chief and his best men have been discussing Jeff Darwin's case since noon. After ten hours, we haven't had a single suggestion. There must be some way to locate Darwin. Chief, we've had a lot of suggestions in the five weeks he's been lost, but none have helped. The best frontiersmen in Texas have failed to find a trace of him. Darwin wouldn't betray the government. Of course not. Uh, What's that you have? This? Oh, a pocket piece, that's all. Oh. Chief, just a minute. We've tried everyone except the man who knows more about the West than all the others put together. Who? Well, he helped us before. He gave me this bullet as a souvenir of that occasion. It's silver, see? The Lone Ranger. Yes. The rest of you may go. Sam, you stay here for instructions. 
I'm going to send you west to give the Lone Ranger all details. I'll try to reach him before you get there to arrange the meeting. The fate of this nation may rest on his shoulders. Word flashed into the west by telegraph, and the federal man followed by the fastest means. He went to a designated spot at night and waited, hoping the Lone Ranger had received the message from Washington. He waited one hour, two hours. Then he heard the hoofbeats of an approaching horse, the thrilling cry of the masked man. Oh, boy, oh, easy, steady. Thank goodness you've come. Sam, it's good to see you again. Steady, There's big fella. trouble, <laughs> serious trouble. Well, what can I do to help? You've got to find out what happened to a man named Darwin, Jeff Darwin. One of your men? Yes. No one's to know what you're doing. Not even your nearest friends, not even Tonto. You must work alone. The whole thing must be held in the strictest secrecy. The following morning, Chief Thundercloud was surprised to find Jeff Darwin sitting in front of his wigwam. The old Indian walked over and sat beside him. You not ride today? No, not today, Thundercloud. I don't know as I'll ride tomorrow either, or the next day. What matter? It's no use. I can never redeem myself. Maybe Thundercloud help. No, you couldn't. See, I can't remember what happened. It's, it's all confused. Uh, you say two men capture you. Is that not right? I don't know what happened. I imagined a lot of things. Maybe I just imagined how those men looked. Uh... I remember a name, Nizer. But no one around here ever heard the name. No... Oh. What's that? This bullet of silver. Me wear around neck on cord. A bullet of silver? Have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? I've heard legends. They're not legends, Jeff. They're true. You ever hear of a fellow who used bullet of silver? Yes. Yes, I've heard of him. Him called Lone Ranger. But Thundercloud, how did you get that bullet? Did he give it to you? That right. Well, do you know him? Me know him. Well, tell me, tell me this. If I held a gun on him, had the drop on him, and his gun was in his holster, could he draw and shoot my gun away before I could fire? Him do that. He could? Then it can be done. That right. And I wasn't just imagining. My memory wasn't playing tricks. The man I want is named Nizer. You maybe asked Lone Ranger to help find him, Nizer. How can I? How can I ask him? Where can he be found? Maybe him see signal. Maybe him come here. Thundercloud, what, what kind of a signal? Send for him. Send for that Lone Ranger. If the stories I've heard are true, if they're not legends, that man might be my salvation. My salvation? He might be much more than that. Me call man. Mariko, Yahi no se. Watule, Aung. Sejo King. Thundercloud's men leaped to obey their leader's orders. Great piles of dry grass were quickly made. Three of them, spaced 50 paces apart. Three great fires were lighted when the flames rose high. Damp moss and wet leaves were thrown on the mounds. Smoke columned high into the air. It was a signal. A signal in smoke on the still air of the early morning. It was Thundercloud's signal to the Lone Ranger. Tonto and Dan Reed were in camp. The Lone Ranger hasn't been back since he left last evening, Tonto. That's right, Dan. Golly, it must have been an important meeting. Him not say what meeting for. Are we going to stay in camp until he gets here or ride out to meet him? Well, we stay here. I'm going to look out and see if I can see him. Uh, I've just got to go to the top of this arroyo. There, I can see a long way on the plane. You'll not go far, Dan. Breakfast ready plenty soon. I think I see him, Tonto. Huh? That's good. It seems to be a white horse. And you watch... Make sure. I will. Tonto, come here a minute. Huh? What matter? I want to show you something. Huh? Uh, Tonto, come. Look off to the west. Uh, uh, He's been on the top of that hill. Uh, Looks like columns of smoke. Uh, you wait. No, wait. See uh, me see him. Is that a signal? Thundercloud Village in that direction. Chief Thundercloud? That's right. Golly, do you suppose that... Thundercloud signal for us. That signal for Lone Ranger. Oh, here he comes. That's the Lone Ranger heading this way. Come on, Silver. 
Him point to smoke signal. Him see it too. Yes. And he sees us standing here. Maybe we go Thundercloud Village right away. Should I saddle Scout and Victor? Wait. We see. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, easy. You saw the smoke signal. Yes, yeah, steady, big fella. <laughs> Thundercloud's Village, isn't it, Toto? That's right. Should I saddle up? Dan, Toto. Come over here while I tell you something. Uh, something matter? Golly. I never saw you look as serious as that. Now sit down here and listen carefully. Uh, yes, sir. Thundercloud may need help. But I can't go to him. Uh -huh. Otto, you and Dan ride to Thundercloud and see what you can do. Where will you be? I I can't tell you, Dan. Oh. I may be gone for several days or weeks. Golly. If we meet, don't recognize me unless I speak to you first. If you don't hear from me, don't try to find me. If you receive a message from me, do exactly what that message says. No matter what else you may be doing, drop it and follow the instructions I send you. Now, is that clear? Yes, sure. Oh, we do it. Dan, Toto. I'm sorry I can't tell you more. How, how soon are you going to leave here? Right now. Here, Silver. Well, whatever you're going to do, good luck to you. Thanks, Dan. Said a big fella. I hope we'll be with you both again real soon. We go see Thundercloud now? Yes, right away. Adios. 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 Come on, Silver. Golly, Tano. I wonder. Come, Dan. We go see Thundercloud. Well, the Lone Ranger has never had a tougher assignment, nor a more important one. He knows that the combined efforts of the nation's foremost scouts brought no clue to Jeff Darwin's whereabouts. He also knows that the fate of America may rest on the finding of the Secret Service man. This is the one time in the masked man's life when nothing else matters. So be sure to follow him through the biggest of all manhunts in the next episode of The Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.